Could the global pandemic make the world more socialist? Inequality has become rampant in recent years. Tax rates for the rich have fallen dramatically since the 1980s, and the world's richest 10% owns 85% of the wealth. Meanwhile, 810 million people, that's more than 10% of the world's population, don't have enough to eat. So it's not surprising that the pandemic has exposed these wide cracks of inequality in our largely capitalist world. Hoarding and price gouging of items like hand sanitizer, toilet paper and flour hurt the poor who struggle to get their hands on essential goods. And the supply and demand forces broke down worldwide when it came to the need for masks and personal protective equipment in hospitals. The risks of infection are unequal too. In the United States, higher wage workers are six times more likely to be able to work from home, putting them at less risk for contracting the virus or losing their jobs during shutdowns. And there's a racial dimension there. Fewer than 20% of Black and Latinx Americans can work from home. With all this inequality in stark relief, governments around the world are turning to socialist solutions. Socialism has often carried a stigma. It can be associated with communism, where there's no private business or property. Everything is owned and distributed by the state, which has often led to authoritarianism. But socialism is said to be a bit more of a flexible ideology with many shades of grey. It often means the state has significant control over distributing wealth to the people. But in many cases, the government is democratically elected. Social democracies already exist in places in Europe like Norway and Sweden. They rely on high taxation to pay for services for everyone. Things like university tuition, childcare and healthcare. But let's be clear, countries governed in this way are still capitalist. Private business has just been tamed with more regulation and taxation. As COVID-19 ravages economies across the world, we're seeing what could be called pandemic socialism. In the US, where a majority of adults have an unfavorable opinion of socialism, the government passed a $2 trillion stimulus bill in response to the pandemic. It gave most Americans a $1,200 check and provided an extra $600 per week for the more than 45 million people who filed for unemployment during the pandemic. The bill also put money towards treatment for COVID-19, a pretty rare move in a country with a privatized healthcare system. In Pakistan, the government is giving 900 million in cash to millions of the country's poorest families. It's the largest economic social intervention in the country's history. The German government is subsidizing 60 to 67% of lost wages to 11.7 million people who are furloughed or had their hours reduced, and much of Europe has taken similar measures. Programs and policies like these have helped keep many people afloat during the pandemic recession. But will governments step up, or are these just band-aids to temporarily stop the bleeding? Part of this shift towards social welfare comes down to ideology. The pandemic has challenged the rugged individualism of capitalism because the health of one individual truly does impact the health of all. As former president Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, who oversaw a successful fight against the Ebola virus in Liberia put it, coronavirus anywhere is a threat to people everywhere. COVID-19 has changed so much from the way that we work to how we eat and where we go and travel to, but it hasn't changed everything. Rich people still want to get rich and they run the world. So what happens next? Will world leaders take the lessons that they have learnt through these socialist policies forward or will they go away when the virus does? <laughs>